Hi, my name's Pete Gerlach. I've been a family systems therapist for 33 years and an observer of the human condition for many decades. I want to pass on to you in this video something that someone else told me. I've long forgotten who gave it to me. But I hope you may find this useful because I bet, without knowing you, that you are a student. You have been and still are a student. We all are throughout our lives. I'm not suggesting, or perhaps you're still in school, but if in case you're a quote graduate, I propose you are still learning. Whether you're in school or beyond school, uh, what this nameless mentor told me is we all go through four stages of learning. In my experience, most people are unaware of these stages. They can't name them and they don't know how to use them. So the purpose of this video is to acquaint you what are these stages and why should you even bother knowing them? Or for that matter, teaching any kids that you care for. Uh, to begin, try for a moment, stop and reflect, and imagine that a six-year-old child looks up at you and says, um, uh, what is learning? What, what is learning? How would you answer that question? It's not a simple one, is it? You could say it's acquiring new information. What is information? <laughs> um, however you define learning, would you agree that you now, whatever your age, whatever your experience, you are in the process of learning important things? Um, one of the things that we all learn, we learn about the world and how it operates and how to operate in the world. We learn to identify our needs and how to fill our needs. That's called problem solving. We learn how to relate to other people. We learn how to parent children. We learn how to do a craft or a profession. We learn all kinds of things all the time. One of the things we learn is a skill or many skills. If our mythical six-year-old with endless curiosity says, well, hey, what is a skill? I just read this word. What, what is a skill? What color is a skill? What, what is that? How would you define a skill? Would you say that playing the piano well is a skill? How about making an omelet? How about raising prize roses? How about winning debates? How about running for president? Um, all kinds of skills that our interests and talents, or lack of them, lead us to attempt to learn. You could probably fill out a list of 20, 30, 40 different skills that you have acquired across your lifetime. Let's say for, for this video's sake, a skill is an acquired ability to do something really well in the opinion of yourself and other people. That's pretty vague, but let's go with it. So how do you learn the skills that you have learned and currently still are learning? The first of four stages that I was taught is we are unaware and unskilled when you're a child, in case you're, you operate a vehicle, you could look at the vehicle and you would have no clue how to operate it. Um, you wouldn't know what it was or what driving was or piloting. Um, you were unaware of the skill and you were unable to do the skill. You were unskilled. That's the first stage that we all start with. Okay, That morphs over time. Um, into the next stage where we become aware, but we're still unskilled. For instance, we can go to a class on how to play the piano, and we can learn the notes, and we can learn the staff, and rhythm, and harmony, and all those technical things about music, and we're confronted with the keyboard, we still can't play. So we become aware, but we are unskilled. That's the second phase. The third phase that hopefully we strive for with encouragement and motivation and hard work is we are both aware and skilled. 
in case you play golf or tennis. There's a time where you learn the fundamentals, how to hold the club, how to hold the racket, where to put the ball, how to serve, where to stand, how to move your shoulders and your feet and your hips and all those good things. You learn those things and you experiment and you practice and you may get coaching or you may not. And gradually you learn how to hit the ball where you want it to go, or at least close to it. So you are both aware of how to do it and you gain a degree of skill at doing it. You are skilled to some degree. Um, that's the third stage. And with some time and more experience and practice, the fourth stage and final one is you're no longer aware of the fundamentals because they have become an unconscious habit. So you're back to unawareness, a form of unawareness, and you retain the skill. So here are the four stages real quick. You're unaware and you're unskilled. Over time you become aware and unskilled. Then you become aware and skilled. And then you, meaning we all, revert to unawareness, meaning the skill becomes automatic. Um, and you're skilled to some degree, minor to major. Those are the four stages. Does this concept make sense to you? Can you relate to it? Is this how you have learned the various skills that you have or are learning? Is this what you see your children going through without even being aware of doing it? Note that moving between these stages, uh, stages is gradual. Um, you don't end one stage and then start the next. There's a continuum of changing of awareness and changing of skill. So it's not something that you easily identify. If you said, what stage of learning is George in, in learning how to play the accordion? Um, it's a subjective judgment. Well, he's, he's pretty aware and he's pretty skilled. So that's somewhere on this continuum. There's no sharp dividing lines. Nonetheless, there are these four distinct stages. So what? You might say, well, that's fine, that's interesting, but I don't see any way of using this. Uh, in thinking about how to answer that question, what occurs to me is the value of it to you and to me and perhaps your kids is if you know these four stages, you can say, I am progressing. If you look at any particular skill that you're trying to learn over time, and you say, which of these phases or stages am I in? Am I unaware and unskilled? Oh no, I'm past that. Am I aware and unskilled? Um, sort of. Or am I aware and skilled? Well, I'm getting there. The feeling that you are progressing, I propose, is useful. I don't know about you, but as I was learning how to make these videos, by the way, uh, gradually I became accustomed to the foibles of YouTube and my PC and my camera and all the variables and I have become comfortable saying I think I know how to produce a usable video. Okay, so I've been using these stages and I propose if you choose to use them you can gain a sense of progress at whatever you're trying to learn and the feeling I'm progressing feels good. That's the whole purpose of this video, is to give you a tool to enhance your sense of progress uh, and succeeding at something. Is that something you'd like to do? I want to propose that a major factor in these stages, and how fast you move through them or if you move through them at all, is who runs your life? Uh, there are two options, which you may or may not be aware of, depending on whether you've seen my other videos or not. As a therapist, what I've learned is some people are governed by what can be called a natural part of their personality called their true self. Their true self is a natural leader and makes excellent short-term and long-term decisions. 
many times and many people and many many people are not ruled by their true self they are ruled by other distrustful personality subselves which can be called a false self if you are ruled by a false self some of the time much of the time all the time you will find moving through the stages of learning will be much slower and you may regress you may never be as successful as you'd like to be or as you could be so the moral of this little sermon is if you want to use these four stages successfully and to your advantage pay attention to who's running your life if you don't know what that means or how to determine who's running your life see my playlist 1b bravo and or go to my nonprofit educational website and uh, look at lesson one that will help you understand about personality subselves and which subselves are running your life and will help you understand if a false self is running your life how can you free your true self to run your life here's the link to an article on the website that you may find useful and here is a second link to a related video that I've already uploaded to YouTube called how can you really break bad habits do you have any bad habits one thing to notice about the fourth stage of these four is when you are unaware of doing it and you are skilled at doing it that can be called a habit some habits as you know are better more enjoyable more productive less harmful than others so here's a link to a video that will offer you at least my best advice after many years of study and pondering and struggling with my own bad habits here's a link to a video that I hope you'll find thought-provoking and useful so to recap my purpose here has been to raise your awareness and your understanding that as a perpetual student you and all others of us go through four identifiable stages of learning learning anything I've chosen to illustrate these stages looking at skills um, so as a way of testing yourself did you learn anything in this video without replaying it can you name the four stages how much did you retain and who is answering that question your true self or quote somebody else unquote I hope you have some fun with this I hope you find it thought-provoking as usual with this video or any of my videos or my website sfhelp.org nonprofit no ads at all none I hope if you have any feedback or suggestions praise or complaints anything please let me know I would value your input uh, meanwhile thanks so much for watching